Okay, so let's uh, move along on this. Um, so we're backing up to metaphysics part two particulars, the problem of individuation, clusters and bundles, realist object is no more than total of characteristics associated with it. One, object is nothing but a cluster of a bundle of properties. Two, logically impossible for two or more substances to possess exactly the same properties. Objection above seems false and seems to be no contradiction in conceiving of two or more disparate objects possessing exactly the same characteristics. Material object can undergo a transformation in respect to one or more of its properties and still remain numerically identical. The cluster theorist needs to deny this. Bare particulars, underlying characteristic entity of substance, Individuate substances, objection, redundant, since distinct spatio-temporal location of each substance is uh, sufficient for guaranteeing numeric diversity. Response, spatio-temporal differences presuppose rather than explain numerical differences. Objection, bare particular and epistemologically subject due to the fact that possesses no distinguishable features like Kantian anumina nor can they be experienced or conceived. Essentialism, distinction needs to be affected between essential and accidental characteristics of a substance. Essential characteristic, inconceivable, that a substance lack and yet remain numerically one and the same object. Object, Quine's counterexample of a D. Re, reading of essentialism, contradictions arise, e.g., Theological ethicists, necessary and theists, but are not necessarily bipedal. Runners are necessarily bipedal, but not necessarily theist. S3, Betsy is a t theological ethicist and a runner. SO, S4, Betsy is both necessarily a theist and not necessarily bipedal, and necessarily bipedal and necessarily a theist. Hence, from S4, we erroneously conclude that Betsy does not exist since her description SE engenders a contradiction. Response, criticism only holds insofar as essential is interpreted as a de re necessity on the de dicto reading of necessity and contradiction cannot be derived. The mind-body problem. How are we to construe relationship between mental and physical? How are cognition and sensation possible if materialism is correct and only physical substance exists? Three, how can brain, a purely physical organ, have thoughts and sensations which are seemingly mental phenomena? Traditional dualism. Two distinct substances constitute reality. A, physical temporal being and spatial extension and B, mental in... Intensive magnitude, temporal being, and no spatial extension, Cartesian interactive dualism. The experience manifests interaction between mental and physical. The problem, modified version, seems interaction must be an illusion since it's impossible that mental and physical interact. <coughs> All right. Uh. Proposed solutions. Occasionalism. Mental and physical never interact interaction due to God's intervening and at appropriate occasion. God, by transcending logical, mental, physical gap, makes our experience possible, e.g. upon occasion of... Are of telephone ringing near agent, God sees to it that agent simultaneously experiences sensation, sound of telephone ringing, unwarranted presumption that there is an exclusive capability, specifically God has both spatial and non-spatial agency, parallelism, Leibniz. At the beginning of time, physical and mental phenomena were put into motion in exact parallel synchronicity, illusory appearance of interaction, but merely due to perfect timing and keeping two phenomena synchronized. Objectivism, the pre this presupposes a mechanism, e.g. God, that regulate and keep mental and physical phenomena synchronized in parallel, but is 
uh, presupposition is unsubstantiated. Materialism, Hobbes, only material substance has existence, and it is the qualities or properties of this matter that are perceived. There is no interaction because all reality is ultimately material. No problem because of its interaction need be explained. Idealism, Barclay. Material substance never perceived, only properties or qualities are perceived, and only these perceptions have reality. Phenomenology, Husserl. Question or putative existence of objects apart from consciousness of them needs to be excluded from consideration. Ontological status of objects transcendent from conscious needs to be held in epist epistemic abeyance consideration should be focused upon a descriptive endeavor to understand nature of consciousness and its suchness as unadulterated consciousness apart from speculation about hypothetical reality of objects revised non-reductive dualism epiphen <clears throat> phenomenalism Although only material substance has been in certain configurations of sufficient complexity, e.g. human brain, the matter will have states, e.g. certain neurological processes, and yield its dependent byproduct phenomena that are not explainable in reducible or physical processes, e.g. sensations and thoughts, objection, conceptually incoherent to maintain that a material process can yield a, as a byproduct phenomena not explainable in physical terms, yet these same phenomena have their being utterly dependent upon underlying physical substance, reductive dualism, eliminates materialism, behavioralism, behaviorism, all mental phenomena are ultimately reducible to physical processes. All talk of mental can be eliminated by reduction to talk of underlying physical processes. Objection. Two people can be in the same physiological state, yet construe it completely different, e.g. though two people both may experience physiological symptoms of anxiety, one may construe it as fear and the other as excitement. Identity theory, brain states, physical phenomena are identical to mental states, objection, sense of reference, two terms could be coexistive, x equals y, but it does not follow from this that they have the same sense or mean the same thing, objection, identity, and predication, if two things are strictly identical, then they share the same set of predicates, given this principle, brain states and sensations are not identical. <clears throat> Response, casual brain states. Brain states can produce or cause sensations as their effect, foregoing difficulties and obviated since brain states and sensations are causes and effects, respectively, and not the same thing. Objection is only resurrects the problem attendant to epiphenomenalism, which can a physical process cause, produce, and bring about a non-physical experience. Ontological comments, Quine. Purpose. Quine offers a criterion for clarifying the actual ontological commitments of a theory. The criterion does not, however, decide the correctness of rival theories. To be is to be the value of a variable. If the assertions in a theory are to be true, then the theory must be exclusively committed to only those entities to which the bound variable of the theory can effectively refer. The philosophy language Wittgenstein, the Tractatus, the picture theory of meaning, a position is a logical picture of a reality it depicts. The mode of this depiction is something that the proposition shows as not something it says, showing and saying, the sense of a proposition are the ways the truth conditions of that proposition are specified. The proposition shows its sense. It shows how things would stand if it was true. It says that they do not stand. The logical form of a proposition can only be shown, displayed, and revealed by the proposition. It cannot be said. A proposition cannot say what its own form is. What can be shown cannot be said. The limits of language and the world. The limit of the language, and likewise the world, cannot be formulated within language. We cannot use language to define the limits of language. Language games, resemblance. A word does not have a unique essential meaning that can be derived from logical analysis overlapping loosely structured similarities in the use of a word. 
compromise its meaning or existence. The word game, there is not connoted, connoted a single property that is essential to all games, but rather a host of overlapping resemblances and a continuum of activities ordinarily called games. Meaning and use, there is no single fundamental use of language. Language has many uses, e.g. poetic, interrogative, assertive, metaphoric, etc. Language games, there are as many language games as there are uses of language and ways of using synthesis. The use of a word in a language is its meaning. One cannot read off directly from a sentence what its use might be. For this, the context needs to be known. Empirical questions, sometimes what appear to be the empirical questions, e.g., can machines think, may in fact be questions of clarifying the grammar, use of the expression, often definitions cannot be supplied, not due to inadequate analysis, but because of real definition as characterized by linguistic usage is extant, the autonomy of grammar, the constructive... <clears throat> the constructive pipe tobacco on my paper there. Anyways, um, let's see, where were we? Uh, the constructive of language is a production of human activity. The adoption of certain grammar and grammatically rules is not due to the higher level rules, but due to convention, reasons of the grammar can only be given within language game. We cannot use language to get outside of language. Epistemology theories of knowledge, rationalism, Plato and Descartes. If someone truly knows something, then they could not possibly be mistaken. Empirical knowledge is always subject to error. It can never be qualified as knowledge. That is a mere belief or opinion. Problem. This view makes science impossible. Claims to empirical science knowledge are held to be suspect and erroneous. Empiricism, Locke, Berkeley, or Berkeley, and Hume. All knowledge is forthcoming from sense experience. There are no innate ideas or privileged indubitable propositions. Truth and self-evident truths of geometry and logic must first be learned through the empirical demonstrations. It follows by the principle of parsimony that prima facie it is only through a posteriori means that any knowledge is acquired. Difference between truth and analytic and synthetic propositions is one of degrees and not of quantitative kind. Degree and difference is no more than one degree of the conviction regarding the truth. And more radical formulations such as with Quine, this proposal becomes one for aban uh, abandoning analytic synthetic distinction. Problem, this view collapses into an idealism where in only reality recognized is that immediate perception and reality of external world apart from immediate sensory data is dubitable. The Scottish School of Common Sensism primary thesis, essentially a reaction to Hume's skepticism, common sensism restores the ontological primary of objects by appeal to common sense, rendering the appeal of objects self-evident and open to the understanding of all. The status of mind is postulated that mind is an active agent for processing the myriad of associations. This organization of processing is accomplished by various laws of Suggestions such as resemblance, contrast, and temporary unity, primary contribution by introducing the notion of mind as an active agent of organization and processing the Scottish school prepared the groundwork for Kant's transcendental idealism. Transcendental idealism, Kant's knowledge is result of diact diatic interaction between intuitions, primitive sense data, and categories of understanding concepts. Intuitions without concepts would be blind. Concepts without intuitions would be empty. Skepticism, epistemological skepticism. If S knows that P, then S is absolutely certain that S is not mistaken that P, but then S has to rule out an infinite number of waves that S might simply be mistaken. It is impossible for S to rule out infinite series of possibilities in a finite amount of time. Therefore, S can never be absolutely certain that S is not mistaken. Therefore, S can never be said to know P. 
scope of skepticism, global applies to allegedly known or knowable propositions and all justified and justifiable propositions, essentially the claim that no person knows any proposition at all. Moderate, slightly less than global skepticism, the view that hardly any proposition is known, knowable, justified, and justifiable, local, some specific types of propositions are not known, knowable, justified, or justifiable, e.g. propositions about the external world and existence of other minds, etc. Strength of skepticism, strong, no proposition is ever knowable, moderate, no proposition is in fact contingently known, weak, no proposition is ever known with certainty. <clears throat> Skeptic criticism of skepticism thesis is self-refuting. It is absurd to claim that one knows that nothing is ever known, for clearly one either knows at least that nothing is known, a contradiction, or one does not know that nothing is known, ever known, a refu refutation of skepticism thesis initiates an infinite regress. Skepticism requires one to commit to an infinite series of meta-epistemic claims of the form S knows that S knows that S knows dot 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 P. This sets up a de facto impossible condition for knowledge. It could realistically be contended that in fact S knows all kinds of P and at time because S is the fact not mistaken that P but S cannot legitimately claim to know that S knows P because S cannot rule out every possible way as might be mistaken reasons for thesis undermine thesis. The very premise used to support the conclusion for the skepticism themselves becomes subject and dubitable based on the very conclusion they uphold. Hence, paradoxically, the strength of the argument used to support the skeptical thesis will vary proportionally to the thesis itself. Foundationalism. Some propositions are non-inferently justified. Every proposition that is justified but not non-inferently justified is such that there is at least one ancestral chain of justification from the proposition of the proposition or set thereof which is non inferentially justified according to the class of the propositions that are non-inferentially justified form and foundation upon which all inferred justifications rest by way of their ancestral chains problem foundationalist accounts for how in inferentially justified pro propositions are justified for a person at one time the issue depends upon empirical certainties are to be understood which is determined by how to construe and explain a root relation between language and non-linguistic experience it describes. Correspondence theory truth of proposition corresponds to a correlate of empirical re reality, hence Tarski's dictum, snow is white, is true if and only if snow is white, i.e. a proposition is true only if it corresponds to the reality it purports to describe. Problem. How does one ascertain whether a proposition corresponds to reality? How is the nature of this correspondence to be understood? Coherence justification for a non-inferentially justified belief is that belief coheres on conditions of consistency with other beliefs in a system of beliefs. Problem certain Circularity and coherence theory seems to be a vicious circularity. How can theory then avoid a charge that is vacacious theory? Response objection assumes that it is possible for two logically incompatible systems of belief to be in internally both coherent and consistent. This is a spurious assumption, for this would be logically possible only in a world where neither system has any correspondence to reality, e.g., <sighs> Two mythical systems of belief, but this ignores the fact that intent of epistemic project is to connect belief with the reality in an attempt to secure claims concerning truth and knowledge. Pragmatism, James, Dewey, and Pierce. Truth regarding some subject is that an opinion which is ultimately fated to be agreed upon by all those qualified to investigate the matter. Problem definition presupposes that scientific knowledge is a asympt <clears throat> symptotically approaching truth presumes that truth cannot be acquired by means other than investigation, e.g. by mystic insight, ignores possibility that consensus of investigators 
may be temporarily achieved only to dissolve away after new putative counter evidence is found. Common sense realism overview of theory G.E. Moore, the propositions of common sense. G.E. Moore claims that certain propositions are known with absolute certainty if by absolute certainty it is meant the limit of certainty as espoused by ordinary. <clears throat> People are assenting to the truth of some claim as such common sense regarding to more accepts the truth of claims such as material objects exist and they are acts of consciousness. The issue of analysis is the distinction should be made between analysis of claim of knowledge from the ordinary understanding of such claim difficulties with the former need not necessarily imply difficulties with with the latter criticism of theory Wittgenstein one at the foundation of well-founded beliefs and lies between what is not founded more uses the phrase I know X to be true and appropriately the claim that common sense realism a sense too cannot be known in the ordinary sense rather than form of groundwork or background for other claims and our world picture. Two, uncertainty. In order to question some propositions to be dubitable, others must not be doubted. These background propositions form the framework for doubt to become possible, but they are by no means immutable. Three, the set of background beliefs. Those beliefs are exempt from doubt cognitively are not deductive set of axioms, rather they form the loose collection of presuppositions about the world that are gradually and concurrently accepted as true. <clears throat> so we will stop there and then we will resume on traditional analysis justified true belief. Uh, this is Justin Williams Savoy, and as always, you can contact me at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. That's S-U-V-O-Y, J-U-S-T-I-N, 123 at gmail.com. Find out how to give to uh, this channel. I need books, so that would be helpful. Um, also, it can do other things that support the channel and enhance the quality of these videos. Slowly but surely, but I hope that you're enjoying this material that I am uploading. This will help us as I attempt to do a survey on Plato's Republic and look at some other philosophical works. And I hope you're enjoying this. Um, and I look forward to making part three of this. All right. Talk to you soon. Goodbye.